Hello, hola everyone. My name is Bruno Figueroa and I am the ambassador of Mexico in Korea. Yorobun Anyong Aseo. It is an honor for me and for the Embassy of Mexico to take part in the Seoul Queer Cultural Festival 2021. Well, during at least the last 20 years, Mexico had put in place a variety of programs and actions to strengthen the protection of rights and fundamental freedoms of all citizens. Our main goal is to make diversity a value rather than an unjustified ground for segregation. In August of 2001, uh, we had a series of constitutional reforms that conferred constitutional status to the illegality of discrimination. And so those uh, reforms were enacted establishing measures to combat discrimination. From that point, the Mexican constitution in its first article expressly prohibits discrimination on the grounds of, and I read, ethnicity, gender, age, disabilities, religion, opinions, sexual preferences, or any other reason that violates the human dignity. And after that constitutional provision was enacted, we needed a legislation to regulate such mandate. Consequently, by the end of 2003, that is two years later, the Mexican parliament issued the law to prevent and eliminate discrimination. The law established in particular an institution, the National Council to Prevent Discrimination, in Spanish, CONAPRED, a body with the power to investigate and correct discriminatory acts committed by public offenders, as well as to provide education against discrimination. Definitely, it is important to remember a historical background that from the Mexican independence to the last decade of the 20th century, a systematic and institutional form of discrimination existed in Mexico, mainly but not only against our indigenous people because of the colonial process that my country experienced for three centuries. Because of that process, after our independence, two centuries ago, exactly this year, the basic rights of indigenous communities in Mexico were systematically violated. At the same time, this racism and discrimination entrenched in our society made other minority groups, such as the members of the LGBT plus community, vulnerable to discrimination. After a long reflection, a long process of self-reflection, the Mexican society resolved to recognize that our country is a multicultural nation and that our diversity must be a source of strength and cultural richness rather than division. Our country is incomplete when someone is left aside and therefore uh, one of the main goals of the Mexican government currently is to guarantee the respect to human dignity and access to the equal rights for all our citizens. Well, that was a long and difficult path. 
the anti-discrimination law in Mexico was the result of the advocacy of many citizens and multiple NGOs who were encouraged by the political transition that Mexico lived in uh, the early year 2000. Um, a group of citizens launched a movement against discrimination and in favor of equality, that was its name. And subsequently, they were invited by the Mexican government to create a citizens commission against discrimination. And they tasked that commission to prepare an assessment about discrimination and propose the first draft of the law. The process to get a, a law against discrimination and pass it through the Mexican legislative bodies was not an easy one, of course. First, you can imagine that reaching a consensus on the diagnosis, the regulatory framework and public policies to combat discrimination implied a long and sometimes a travel course. Despite these setbacks, the process was highly successful, and I would like to underline that only two years passed between the reform of the art first Article 1 of our Constitution and the enactment of our law. Two years is very quick when we're talking about such an important and uh, profound legislation. Uh, but it was very successful because it was a citizen's effort in favor of society. It was a bottom up initiative, but which had at the same time the support from the government. And it was not an imposition of guidelines, either from a political group or from the government by itself. The most important factor was at the time that most of the stakeholders seemed to agree on the fundamental principle that discrimination should have to be outlawed. Based on that minimal common sense coincidence, the law to prevent and eliminate discrimination was drafted. Unquestionably, the first, first law was not a perfect text. And in fact, many individuals and organizations were not happy with the first decree because they considered that some provisions were ambiguous or lenient. However, despite its flaws, the law became a historical achievement and the major development in the fight for a more egalitarian society. Thankfully, the text has been improved throughout the years. The definition of discrimination contained in the law had been broadened and the work of the Mexican Discrimination Prevention Agency had been strengthened with powers to prevent and eliminate hate speech. As I mentioned before, the law was achieved thanks to the momentum created by the year 2000 political transition in Mexico. And consequently, it did not experience major opposition from political and social groups, even from conservative political parties. On the contrary, many felt that the text needed to be stronger and have a wider scope 
for the protection of minorities. The government that uh, won the, the elections in the year 2000 was precisely conservative, but open enough to support this important transformation uh, for the Mexican society. We need to have concrete information that allows us to identify the groups of society mostly impacted by discriminatory practices. One of the main tools we have in Mexico to measure our progress and setbacks is the National Survey on Discrimination conducted periodically by our National Council to Prevent Discrimination, CONAPRED, as I mentioned it, its name in Spanish. The National Survey measures the perceptions on discrimination held by the general population in Mexico and by the several groups that live under circumstances of vulnerability to discrimination. That is women, children, the LGBT plus community, youngsters, elders, ethnic minorities, religious minorities, people with disabilities, immigrants, and domestic helpers. The information provided by the survey is very useful to harmonize the relation between needs and laws and to mainstream an anti-discrimination perspective in public institutions and their policies guaranteeing access to justice for those who suffer discrimination. These actions have transformed our culture, society, and policies to make the respect for diversity an established principle, seeking to seize the denial or conditioning of rights to the extent possible. The change in our paradigm towards discrimination assisted in spreading a culture of non-discrimination in Mexico. And uh, this is important to observe. CONAPRED today is one of the first seven institutions in Mexico most trusted by citizens in only a few years. In addition to the work made at the national scale, every state in Mexico has established anti-discrimination agencies to deal with cases of discrimination and segregation. Likewise, more civil society organizations have joined this work. Yes, the, the government of Mexico is committed to achieve a society defined by a non-discrimination approach where all people can exercise their rights fully. Unfortunately, homophobia is still one of the most common discriminatory practices and combating it has been a crucial task for the construction of a country of full rights and freedom for all. Disinformation is an ally of homophobia. That's why my government has established a national program for equality on, and non-discrimination for the years 2019-2024, whose main objective is to dismantle discriminatory practices against members of the LGBT plus community and other vulnerable groups. 
In May 2019, the National Discrimination Information System, or by its acronym CINDIS, was put into operation. This system is a virtual platform that gathers studies and surveys on discrimination in Mexico, whose objective is to offer information for decision-making and the formulation of policies to com combat and eradicate the scourge of discrimination. There is, of course, still a lot to do. And, uh, you don't change societal patterns in just a few years, even with strong laws. And I will give you a concrete example. The Mexican Senate is currently processing a ban on the so-called conversion therapies that still some doctors practice in my country. And recently Mexico City passed a similar regulation. Well, it is a great honor for me to be part of the Seoul Queer Cultural Festival on behalf of the government and people of Mexico. We would like to offer our deepest congratulations for this effort, despite all the difficulties imposed by the current situation. In Mexico, we firmly believe that democracy is an essential part of our identity and that a democratic country cannot be built by excluding any part of its society. That is why in the year 2003, Mexico became one of the first countries of Latin America to enact anti-discrimination laws. In 2015, our Supreme Court legalized gay marriage throughout the country. By participating and supporting this event, we reiterate our commitment to human rights and to the enjoyment of these rights by our citizens free from any discrimination. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Chongmal Kamsamnida. Definitely no. The freedom of religion is protected by the Constitution. What is not protected is hate speech. According to Mexico's legal framework, the freedom to express one's religion can only be subject to the limitations prescribed by law and necessary to protect the fundamental rights and freedoms of others. A similar regulation of this right is found in international human rights treaties and in many constitutions around the world. An overwhelming majority of Mexicans belong to the Catholic Church, which still doesn't accept homosexuality. However, the separation of church and state is a fundamental principle in my country. In Mexico, there is a powerful discourse about the secular nature of the state, and it is politically unacceptable to promote a religious rationale or values for policy decisions. Well, that's not true. 
in Mexico, we are a full democracy. It is not possible to punish the manifestation of ideas because this would lead to a contradiction with the sacred principles established in our constitution. Our law to prevent and eliminate discrimination is not incompatible with the freedom of speech, which is also protected by our constitution. On the contrary, our regulatory framework guarantees the freedom of speech, the freedom of any person to express ideas, if those actions do not interfere with the enjoyment of fundamental rights and dignity of other citizens. Giving an opinion which may be scientific or hypothetical about certain persons or persons uh, doesn't constitute a crime, but inciting hatred or violence against certain groups cannot be accepted.